Hi, welcome to this speed paint process video something. I wanted to make a drawing based on Deco 27's new- it's, it's not really new anymore. It's still- it's still his newest song, Sad Girl Sex, but it's not new new anymore. I think it's been like a month, but I, I recommend listening to it first since I would- if not for copyright, I would just put the music video and the song in this video, but I don't want to- I don't want to push it, so <laughs> I will not be doing that. Here are a bunch of screenshots that I took for reference about- honestly not even the character design because you'll see it later, but the artist, I think, posted a reference of the character. It was more for the backgrounds and kind of all of the visual motifs that they use. So I've referenced this pose off a photo from Pinterest and I'll, I'll put the photo in. I think I sketched, yeah, I sketched this one twice. I've been trying to teach myself more about like posing and anatomy because I feel like I have a good baseline knowledge of anatomy and how to pose people. The second that you get perspective or foreshortening involved, it like makes my brain hurt. And I feel like it's good to reference in general. I love rendering Miku's hair. You can make- I don't know if you can catch it, it's really quick. Because basically the way that I pick colors for rendering is- for this one I went cooler. Like, I would, in Procreate, take the color bar and then I would slide it a little bit cooler and a little bit darker and more saturated and just do that a couple times to pick a new color whenever I needed to go darker. and. I, I love, love, love how that looks for Miku's hair. It's kind of how I rendered everything. The skirt was a little different since the skirt is just black, so I I wanted to make it look a bit like leathery or something. I don't know. Like a shinier texture, you know those shiny skirts? I don't know what they're called because I hate wearing them. I hate that texture, it's evil. But for Miku, she can slip. I spent a long time with all of those items in the background, just like zooming into those pictures and trying to figure out what stuff was and how I would draw it. And it was really fun. What wasn't fun was trying to figure out halftone and procreate, because for some reason it was kind of evil. <laughs> I think I got it to look mostly okay, but also none of the items are like the focus of anything. I realized that in the video, she's like, kind of in- it's cropped, so it doesn't immediately register to me, but she's in a coffin, so I decided to like, make a little coffin thing to put like, the logo and the text onto. So I actually switched canvases for this because that one was getting really full, and I- I just traced over it, like, <laughs> I was like, I don't know what font this is, I don't- I know, I know what it says in Japanese, not because I know Japanese, but because it's the song title. I don't know how you would write that in Japanese, I don't know what font this is. I was getting really scared, so I was like, I'm just gonna trace it, and that's okay. But after I, I like, went briefly into Photoshop to put the logo in, and I was like, this, this bar thing is way too thick. And now we go into the, f the, f the fun part of this, which is when I cracked open Blender because there are these, these little um, symbols in the video and they... I don't really know if that's 2D or 3D in the original, but it looked fun to 3D model. And I think I did a good job of getting the shape down. What's really funny is I don't know what I did because I know how to make shapes in Blender and I know how to like 
turn them different colors and draw on them. I don't actually know what I'm doing. It's awesome. Um, but whenever I would try to like actually render images of it, like it would not render the metal texture that I made. So, and I, I tried for a really long time to make it work and I just couldn't get it. So I just, um, I just took a screenshot of it because I was like, I'm just going to line this up so there's no like UI because I need it. I don't actually need it as a model. I need it as like a 3D image. So I'll just screenshot it and then I like cut it out in Photoshop and like I did some stroke and text a little bit of texture over it to make it look a little bit more pow. I don't know, not pow, like something. <laughs> and then I moved on to the second symbol, which is this fire symbol. I had a lot of issues with this because I wanted to take I sculpt the shape that I sculpted and then cut out the middle. I had a lot of problems. And then I went to a YouTube tutorial that showed me how to do stuff and then I tried to do it and I made a blender file that can't be opened. Like my computer just can't open it. Like my, like whatever thing, I don't remember what it was called, but whatever I was trying to do, I guess was too much for my poor MacBook. And it, it was like, you can have the file still, but every time you open it, you're gonna have to force quit blender because you can't open it. So I just kind of had that. I, was, I wasn't happy with it, but I needed to take a break. The next symbol that I wanted to make were these, these hearts. And I was like, these also have holes in the middle. So the thing that I did is I took a torus, which is like a donut shape. And I just kind of like squished it into the heart shape. And I think it, I, I like how it looks. I feel like when I put them side by side, they like obviously look different, but I don't think that's a bad thing. And then I went back and I took a torus and I squished it into the shape that I needed it to be, thus creating the fire symbol. And now there's one more and it's this like spiky little thing. I don't, I don't actually know quite what it's supposed to be, but I think that's okay. So I, I took some cones and I like kind of tried to make them look a little more angular, but it didn't really work because it doesn't look as spiky. It looks a little softer, but again, I think it's fine that it doesn't look exact. And then I like, I cut, I cut everything out. And the reason that they're all on orange backgrounds is because the blender default background is gray. And I knew that if I was working with like black or gray shapes, when I tried to cut anything out, it was going to cause me problems. But instead I started going a little bit crazy because there'd be this like slight orange edge that I couldn't get rid of. Like it was a, like a pixel, but then I just did like a, a stroke around everything that was like pink. And I think that it looks fun. The next thing that I wanted to have was there are these bubbles in the image and in the video as well, not just the image, but like the image I'm showing. So I took some bubbles. I took a transparent bubble PNG off Google. Not even Google, I don't even use Google. Fucking DuckDuckGo, whatever, you know. And I did some multiply layers as well as I made them pink because no blue bubbles. I made some of them have more opacity than others so it would make depth. And then the final, final thing in the corner there's this font and this text i found some no non-licensed font for this and i imported it into photoshop and made it in the corner like i made it warp around and thanks for watching this is a little bit frazzled that's a video but i think that's okay